Hey you. Yeah, you. If I was put on this earth for anything, it is to share the love of film with the uninitiated. Nobody respects the arts today, but we can change that, right? Yeah. I just need you to promise me one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell mom, okay? Yeah. All right, cool. I'll get the bob and the popcorn. Let's go. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to the movie house. And today we're going to retro recommend. All right, let's take you back to your mom or else I'm going to get in real trouble. All my life, if I've had to deal with one constant. It's always kind of been, hey, you know, you look a lot like Chris Farley. Yeah, God damn it. I know. Duh. I'm a fat white guy named Chris, who, because I took theater, I have a flamboyant and animated demeanor. It's like I was a goddamn copy of the 90s comedian. Though I didn't really help that comparison, because many a times I have reenacted gags of his, you know, just for a chuckle. You know, so it's just something I've had to live with. Hell, and now with the facial hair, it kind of got this Jack Black, you know, Chris Farley combo going on. But sadly, new generations may not even know who Farley was. After exploding on the scene with the 90s regime change at Saturday Night Live, alongside Adam Sandler, David Spade, and Chris Rock, his meteoric rise and tragically early death all happened in under a decade. His personal story was ultimately a Pagliacci's tale of addiction. But there was no denying that this man had a talent for making people laugh, and that's how I like to remember him. While he released quite a few movies during such a short period of time, he was actually also originally going to be Shrek before his death. It's his first movie in a leading role, 1995's Tommy Boy, which is far and away his best film. The story concerns the aimless but lovable screw-up Tommy Callahan, a man-child who's never really had to grow up being the heir to an auto parts manufacturing company. But when his father, Big Tom Callahan, dies, Tommy is finally forced to grow up a little. Now, in order to save the company from being closed and all of its employees fired, Tommy, alongside his father's sycophantic assistant, Richard, must attempt to sell half a million brake pads in order for Callahan Motors to remain open and free from other companies buying it up. What ensues is a basic road trip movie that is elevated by two comedians who were truly good friends. You know, the kind of friends who really know how to get under each other's skin and they're constantly shit-talking to each other. Apparently, they fought a lot during the production, but this adversarial aura really helps sell the fact that their characters in the movie don't really like each other that much. The production began without a finished script and was constantly being written and rewritten throughout. Yet somehow, amazingly, it all ended up working. And I believe that really comes down to the comedic talent and chemistry of its two leads, Farley and his fellow SNL castmate David Spade. Saturday Night Live creator Lorne Michaels conceived this movie after just seeing how the two were like in real life. And it really makes their on-camera rapport come off as completely effortless. With many of the film's most memorable gags being either created on the spot or simply shit the two would do to each other in real life. And Farley is so on point in this movie. You know, he may come off as like a slob, but there is a laser focus to his comedy. He was just this butterball of explosive energy and surprising physicality. But on top of that, Chris gives a genuinely sweet performance and really sells the emotional scenes as well. And that juxtaposes wonderfully to David Spade and his dry comebacks and just constantly having to deal with this man-child. Ugh, I can actually hear you getting fatter. But I think another reason why this film has had a longer shelf life than other comedies from its era is that it doesn't rely on gross out gags, foul language, or overt sexual situations. This is a movie with a fat guy for the lead, and there's no fart jokes in this movie. Let that sink in. And you know, it's obviously one of those movies that I watched as a kid, and all of the adult humor just went over my head. I think some of that is because of its two stars and the fact that writers from SNL were working on this film. They still had that discipline of having to deal with the, you know, the confines of live television. They weren't out to make something brazenly risque. And besides Spade and Farley, the supporting cast is pretty great too, with many of them playing completely against type. Dan Aykroyd goes full asshole as rival auto parts maker Ray Zielinski. Brian Dennehy playing Big Tom looks like he's actually having a good time for once and not just being a stick in the mud. Rob Lowe, on the other hand, just plays a variation of the douche nozzle he portrayed in another SNL spinoff movie, Wayne's World. Just this time, they throw his character through the ringer, beating the shit out of him throughout. This is a small detail for some people, but another reason I really like this film is that Tommy's potential love interest, Michelle, played by Julie Warner, is cute, but in, like, an obtainable way. It doesn't seem ridiculous that she and Tommy might have chemistry. When you contrast that to Adam Sandler movies where the egg-headed chud wants us to believe that the likes of Kate Beckinsale, Selma Hayek, and Marissa Tomei would shack up with him, and you can see how this can get stupidly ridiculous. 
Growing up, this was nothing more than an enjoyable comedy from a comedian I really liked. Realistically, besides the film's two stars, you know, there's nothing spectacular about this movie. But with a comedy, you know, you, you never really need all those other parts. You just need it to be funny. And in that regard, this movie succeeds. But I had a reason for why I wanted to retro-recommend this film besides other than just me liking it. This was a favorite movie of my grandfather, Bob Steves, who we lost this time last year after being sick for quite a while. Watching this movie again after his passing has brought out layers that I never fully appreciated. When Big Tom dies in the movie, um, they play Amazing Grace on the bagpipes, and that's actually what my grandfather requested for his funeral. My grandfather too, like Big Tom, was a self-made man, and the similarities throughout this film bring equal parts happy and sad memories. And you know, what else can I say? I, I miss him. I'm never gonna stop missing him. You know, but the way that our loved ones live on is through our memories, and they can trigger from the smallest of things. A phrase spoken, a specific time of year, or simply a movie, where you can sit back for 90 minutes and enjoy yourself, all the while thinking of the back of your head. Man, if he was here still, if he was himself again and he was healthy, we would be having a good time. And because of that, I will always be thankful that I have Tommy Boy, which is some solid celluloid through and through. One that's not a spectacular movie, but one I will never stop loving. Thanks again, guys, for watching. As always, I appreciate the support. And uh, how about I hear from you guys now? How about you tell me a movie that always brings back good memories of someone who's no longer here anymore? I'd really love to hear from you. And per usual, guys, if you like my shit and you want to see more, click down here to subscribe, like, comment, share to your friends. Please do. Until next time, but most importantly, I love you, Papa, and I miss you.